Now I've got about 11 things I want to say to you, so I'm going to hop around a little bit, but let's face it, I've done stranger things. I'm going to flip this script upside down and do a painting demo of these Demogorgon dice, but if you will hold on just a second, I've got some dust in my mic. Lucas is some pretty mind flaying dice right here, so I'm going to need your maximum attention. This video is going to be a little bit different than our standard video because it's not so much a tutorial as it is me actually making these Demogorgon dice. Now, if you know who the Blue Mimic is, he makes a ton of master 3D prints for high level dice makers so that they can make their own dice with their own branding on them. He made these Demogorgon looking ones from Stranger Things and sent them out to me and I turned them into resin versions of themselves. Because the 3D printed material is not quite as strong as regular resin, I had to recreate them. But we're not going to show that in this video. This video is about turning the Demogorgon dice into something usable. He also gave me this cool new mold system, which I can't quite show because it's an upcoming Kickstarter, but I'll show that in a future video. I even experimented with the quick curing resin because we're not looking for any sort of transparency in these dice. I thought maybe it doesn't matter and this is a good time to try it out. But after mixing it up, it has the same problems that the 3D printing resin has and it's just a little bit too soft. If you were to ever roll this stuff, it just would not be good and it would slowly start to deform. I had to sand one face on each of the die that I was using to match the rest of them and because it was 3D printed, it didn't need to be super sanded. I only did it to the first level of Zona papers, which is the equivalent of 600 grit sandpaper. So again, not very fine at all. I just needed something that would hold paint because we're going to do some more stuff to this later. And I thought that was pretty good, at least good enough to get us started. Now for these dice, I was going to try and base it off of the Stranger Things Demogorgon from the show. And it had kind of this darker skin tone that I was going for, as well as the gaping open mouth. So I started just with some nutmeg brown from Walmart, and I just wanted to see if the paint would stick and you can see here it is not sticking very well at all there's a lot of transparency that you can see through there so we need to fix that by putting a primer coat on these which I kind of was expecting to have to do anyway so I go outside and get some black primer and just completely coat the exterior of these things in black primer it is extremely important that you do very very light layers going back and forth very quickly because we don't want any paint to kind of glob up or else that's going to show in the final product of the dice so I let them sit for about 10 minutes then I flip them over and do the other side of the dice there, getting some completely primed black dice. Now I can actually go for the skin tone color that I want, and I've got a nice black undertone there. So I'm going to use some spice tan and nutmeg brown to get what I think is a pretty close approximation of the Demogorgon skin. I do about one to one of those colors, and I start laying the paint on there. Now I could have done this two different ways. I could have painted the numbers first and then the skin tone last, but I ended up going skin tone first. And as I was doing that, I actually found a neat little trick, which is if you just have a tiny amount of paint on your brush, you can go right over the numbers and not get any paint bleed down inside the numbers, which is great and it saves a lot a lot of time. The downside to doing it this way is you have to be extremely precise with your number inking, which I am not and you're going to see that that causes a problem which actually turns out to be a happy little accident, thank you Bob Ross, as we're going through this and I wish I had planned for that uh, but we adjust and we go from there. So I'm painting the entire skin tone on the outside for anything that isn't essentially the Demogorgon's gaping open mouth there. Now I do one whole coat on this 1D20 and then I go back in and do a second coat after it dries, but while it's drying, I can go ahead and do the coat on the other D20. And then from there, we'll have two coats in and we can start on the inking. I know we're going to have to do a third one probably at some point, but I go ahead and do my two layers of skin tone on the D6 as well. If you miss any paint and it gets on the other parts, don't worry. We've got a lot of other painting to do, so we're going to fix that up later. For the numbers on the dice, I got as close to blood as I could find, which was my corn red, and it will also go for the maw of the dice as well. Now, this is where accuracy and patience can work out really well for you if you can get right inside the numbers the first try the first time. Again, I am not very good at that. I normally do the throw it all on there and smear it off technique, which I almost have to do right in the very beginning. You can see the first number I do, I mess up on and I was like, all right, well, I'll just be very careful on the next one. And even the next number, I instinctually did my wipe away thing and I was like, oh crap, I shouldn't have done that. But wait, that looks kind of good. So then I started doing it on purpose for the other numbers and it started getting this cool little blood smear effect and oh, it was just awesome. And so I did it for the rest of the numbers and I started getting a little bit more loosey goosey and it started being more fun because I don't like having to be too precise with things and I wanted this to be fun in the first place. So after I did all the numbers, I went on to the backside and then onto the maw of the Demogorgon going a little bit more relaxed with the paint, knowing that I was probably gonna have to do a second layer on things anyway. So I just had more fun with it and started throwing paint 
wherever it needed to go. After I completed the Maw and the Blood Spattered numbers on 1d20, I did the same exact thing for the other one, you're not missing anything there. However, because the Blood Spatter wasn't my original intention, I wanted to make one of them have absolutely none. So I did a third coat of that same kind of paint, that same mixture, and went over it trying to remove as much of the Blood Splatter as I possibly could. Then I took some black paint to go back over the numbers to kind of mimic the actual font from Stranger Things, because now there's a lot of red on the outside, so I wanted it to be dark black on the very inside, and I hid all the extra red splatters I had when I was painting over the mall. After finishing all that up, I had to actually move on to a tedious process. I took some glossy white and I started painting the teeth. No matter how fast and quick I wanted to go with those, I really couldn't because I needed to be precise or else I'd have to just keep doing paint layer over paint layer over paint layer. However, this is when the dice started really becoming Demogorgon dice. You can see the comparison of with teeth, without teeth here on the 2D20s. After I had the teeth done, I could move on to actually making the red and the blood look very shiny, like it was an actual wound or an open mouth from the Demogorgon. So I took a glossy shade, which was the Reichland Flesh Shade, and I go over anywhere that there's red that isn't numbers. I didn't do anything on the numbers, possibly could have, but I didn't want to mess up the skin tone that I had going. And I didn't want to get any of the flesh shade on the skin tone, which I know doesn't make sense, but it wouldn't be as glossy as the mouth, which is, I was trying to have like a <laughs> contrast here between the glossy mouth and the actual skin tone. After that was done, I could take some Seraph and Sepia, non-glossy, and go over the teeth to make them look a little less pearly white. I don't think the Demogorgons are too into dentistry. And the dice were almost done, but I really wanted to get that kind of spittle effect from the Demogorgon. So I took this E6000 glue, which is a technique I learned from Watch It and Paint It, and I'll link that in the description down below. And it'll work with any glue that leaves this long little strand with it as you're going along. We're going to make the spit from the Demogorgon on the dice, which I think takes these to just an absolutely whole nother level and it makes it just look so real and just nasty and vile and it's my favorite part of the dice. I'm super into it and I can't wait to try this out on a mini sometime. It makes the mouth look absolutely fantastic. This is now the centerpiece of the dice, which it should because it was supposed to be that way in the first place and it just adds that much more depth to the dice overall. And now that I've got them on there, I do it both on the D20 and the D6. And I thought I was done with these dice. I actually showed them off to the Patreons that I have saying, yo, look at these dice. They're done. They're going to come out next week. Well, that was last Saturday. I started talking to the Blue Mimic and saying, yo, look, I'm done with your dice. And he was like, well, you're not done. You didn't encase them in the other dice that I sent you. And I was like, wait, those are for that? I just thought you sent me some blank dice to have fun with. And he called me a dummy, which he should have, because I'm actually supposed to take these dice that I made and encase them in another clear bit of resin so that they are balanced and not going to just be art pieces. I can actually use and roll them. So we're going to do that. And it's like missing one step on Ikea. So I'm not going to show that again. It's just encasing them in resin like I've done a billion times in dice before. So I encase these things in resin and I go through my polishing grit of Zona papers. There's a few problems that I noticed here on the D6 as I was doing it. Again, there was a hidden bubble that I didn't notice until I started sanding, which I, it just keeps happening to me. I don't really know why that happens. It, uh, whatever. It doesn't matter. In the end, we've got two dice that are now balanced and rollable sets of Demogorgon dice, because I know that was going to be something somebody was going to bring up. You were going to say, hey, well, you can't actually roll these, and you were right. I am a little sad, though, because as I was doing this one, I got a nick on the D20, not a big deal, but you lose all of the strands of the spittle that you had. It's totally balanced. You can roll this and use it on the table all you want. You can see that little hole on the D6 there, but it doesn't have those strange little spit lines, which I absolutely love, but that's okay, because I kept one of them so that I could see those little spittle things because I just loved it. It's just going to sit on my desk. Admittedly, I do think the D6 actually looks better encased in resin because you couldn't really have much room for the spit there anyway. There isn't like a giant hole like there is for the D20s here. And I kept the one that has the blood splatter without any resin on it. And this is just going to sit right on my desk so I can say, hey, dang, that's a scary looking dice and I can get nightmares from it all day long. And if I'm really, really mad at a dice project, I can pretend to have it eat some of the other dice that I'm making because this is the most vile yet awesome looking D20 I've ever made and I'm super duper proud of it. So before we get on to the glamour shots, I really want to thank the Blue Mimic for sharing his skill of 3D printing with me. Wait a minute. That reminds me, let's talk about Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. God, I'm good at transitions. If you haven't heard of Skillshare before, they're an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people to deepen their passions and get lost in their creativity. Their classes are designed for real life, so no matter what you're looking for, you can take it at your own pace, which sometimes for me means binging it all day, or sometimes it means doing it over a few months. Either way, they've got you covered, and it's a great way to try and break the monotony of all this boredom from being stuck inside. Like, I just got photos 
Photoshop, so I've been trying to learn a lot about it, and they have a ton, a ton of different classes, both from beginner to advanced level, and people who could wipe the floor with my skills. Daniel Scott is an absolute Photoshop master, and I love all of his classes that he gives on there. He's got me from using Microsoft Word for my thumbnails into actually using Photoshop and getting things that I'm proud of. Either way, if Photoshop's not your thing, maybe working with resin or anything to really get your anxiety to a manageable level during all this crazy time and just focus on creativity and some spontaneous acts of just expression. I've found their membership to be very valuable, but if you want to try it out for yourself, the first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership so that you yourself can explore your creativity. Back to the glamour shots, which is I know what you're looking for, because the D6 here looks so good in the resin. It's my favorite of the two that I encased in resin. For some reason, it just sits very, very well with me, even with the bubble right on the center of the six, which is an unfortunate placement, I still like it a lot. And I'm happy to have one D20 that is fully encased in resin, because now I can add it to my dice sets that I'm gonna be playing with on the table, and I can use this for rolling big bad evil guy attacks. But this one with the spittle is just next level, and not all dice need to be functional. This is just as good as if I had painted a really nice miniature, in my opinion, and I'm proud of all three of these dice. And by the way, I have a huge announcement, which is that I have two new stream shows coming to Level Up Dice's Twitch streams on a weekly basis. One is going to be called Building Character, where I'll be streaming things like making maps, dice, and delving heavily into the process of creating my homebrew D&D world. And the other is called the Red Wagon Inn, which is going to be an actual play stream of my D&D world that I'll be DMing. I've got some amazing players, and we have plenty of guest stars planned for future episodes. So come check them out and hang out with me on stream, as I'd love to say hi to all of you. And stay tuned to my socials, because i got more information on that coming your way. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this kind of different style of I'm making a very specific type of dice and just delving into it with me. I've had a good time with it and I've been wanting to show off these dice for so long. I'm so happy with them. Maybe subscribe if you want to learn how to make your own dice from scratch in the future or for more content like this. And let me know some other things you might want to see in the comments down below. I'd love to talk to you. That's it for this video. I'm off to spam Fem Wolfhard to see if he can get these dice in the next season and I hope that you have a fantastic day.